Prior to the election, President Donald Trump appeared on the Joe Rogan podcast, a conversation that quickly became one of the most viral interviews in recent memory. The topics were broad-ranging, but one particular statement from Trump struck a deeper chord, even though many seemed to overlook it. Trump commented on how the Middle East is rapidly changing and briefly mentioned that prophets have foretold the end of the world centering on that very region. You know there are prophets who say the world will come to an end in the Middle East, Trump said to Rogan. While many might have taken this as a passing remark, those familiar with biblical prophecy might recognize it as a profound reference to a consistent theme throughout Scripture. The prophetic significance of the Middle East, especially the nation of Israel, in the unfolding of the last days. The Middle East is rapidly changing. You know, there are prophets that say the world will come to an end in the Middle East, you know that. The Bible repeatedly highlights this region as the setting for critical end times events. This theme isn't just in a few isolated verses. It is woven throughout the pages of the Old and New Testaments. From the prophecies of Ezekiel and Daniel, to the visions given to Zechariah, and finally to the revelation granted to John, the biblical text continually returns to the Middle East indicating that it will be the focal point of the final chapters of human history. Even Jesus himself spoke of the events that would take place in and around Jerusalem as signs that the end was drawing near. The Bible repeatedly emphasizes this region as the backdrop for key end times events, with multiple prophets from both the Old and New Testaments highlighting and stressing its significance throughout Scripture. Among the most compelling and pivotal aspects of these prophecies is the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. This singular event holds profound implications, as it is central to the unfolding of the Great Tribulation and signals the approach of the climactic moments in the prophetic timeline. In our lifetimes, the notion of a sitting president like Donald Trump, who openly acknowledges end-time prophecy. Heading into office makes this period uniquely intriguing. His recognition of these themes casts a spotlight on the importance of the temple in biblical prophecy, and how current events could align with Scripture in ways we have never seen before. The temple in Jerusalem has always been more than just a structure. It is a symbol of God's presence and His covenant with His people. Throughout the Old Testament, the temple served as the center of worship, sacrifice, and divine revelation. It was the place where God's glory dwelled among His people. Yet both the first temple, built by Solomon, and the second temple, rebuilt after the Babylonian exile, were destroyed. However, the scriptures point to the construction of a third temple in the last days, a structure that will play a critical role in the fulfillment of end times prophecy. In Daniel 9.27, we find a clear reference to the future temple. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. This verse introduces a leader who will make a covenant with Israel, only to betray it midway through the seven-year period known as the Tribulation. The abomination that causes desolation will occur in the temple, marking a pivotal moment in the prophetic timeline. Further insight is provided in 2 Thessalonians 2.4, where the Apostle Paul describes the actions of the Antichrist. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. This blasphemous act of self-exaltation will take place in the rebuilt temple, underscoring its central role in the events of the Great Tribulation, 
This passage not only confirms the existence of the temple, but also highlights the tensions surrounding Jerusalem, a city that will become the epicenter of global attention and conflict. What makes these prophecies particularly striking is the ongoing discussion and preparation by groups in Israel to rebuild the temple. Organizations such as the Temple Institute have devoted themselves to the meticulous study and reconstruction of temple vessels, garments, and rituals. They have even identified and trained priests from the line of Aaron to perform sacrifices should the temple be rebuilt. These developments align closely with biblical prophecies, suggesting that the groundwork for this monumental event is already being laid. The implications of this effort are monumental as it brings us closer to witnessing the fulfillment of prophecies that have been foretold for millennia. Linked closely to the rebuilding of the temple is the event Jesus referred to as the abomination of desolation. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 15, Jesus warns, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Today, we'll unpack this passage and explore what it means, not just for those in Judea, but for believers everywhere, as we look toward the fulfillment of God's ultimate plan for humanity. Matthew 24, verses 15 to 16. Jesus begins with an urgent call to action. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Notice the immediacy of the command. Jesus doesn't say to take your time or think about what to do. He says to flee, to run, to leave everything behind and seek safety in the mountains. Why such urgency? What could possibly require such a rapid and radical response? The abomination of desolation isn't just any event. It's a pivotal moment that signals the onset of great tribulation, a time of unparalleled suffering and chaos. The urgency is clear. Matthew 24, verses 17 and 18. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Imagine being in the middle of a task, caught completely off guard, and knowing that even a moment's delay could mean the difference between life and death. This event, first described in Daniel chapter 11 verse 31, and later referenced in Revelation chapter 13 verse 14 to 15, marks a turning point in the tribulation as the Antichrist desecrates the temple and reveals his true nature. This act of defilement will trigger unprecedented persecution of God's people and signal the final countdown to Christ's return. The significance of this event cannot be overstated. It not only fulfills the prophetic words of Daniel and Jesus, but also serves as a stark reminder of the spiritual battle that will reach its climax during the Great Tribulation. Jerusalem, and specifically the Temple, will become the stage upon which the forces of good and evil collide in a dramatic and decisive way. For believers, this is a call to recognize the urgency of the times and to be prepared spiritually for what lies ahead. It is worth noting that we are living in a time when the pieces of this prophetic puzzle seem to be coming together with remarkable clarity. The fact that Donald Trump, 
a sitting president has shown an awareness of end times prophecy, adds a unique layer to the current geopolitical landscape. Trump's presidency could prove to be a fascinating period in light of these biblical prophecies. Never before in modern history have we seen a world leader so openly referencing themes that align with end times events. Trump's recognition of the significance of the Middle East, coupled with his strong stance on Israel, makes his role on the global stage one to watch closely. His administration's actions, such as moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem and brokering peace agreements in the region, have already had profound implications. Could his leadership pave the way for the fulfillment of the prophecies concerning the temple and the covenant mentioned in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27? Only time will tell, but the parallels are striking. Trump's acknowledgement of these prophetic themes, particularly his focus on the Middle East, suggests a heightened awareness of the spiritual significance of these events. This recognition, combined with his political influence, sets the stage for a period that could witness unprecedented developments aligning with biblical prophecy. For believers, this reinforces the importance of being watchful, discerning the signs of the times, and remaining anchored in the truth of Scripture. 